Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I've got an interesting first impressions to do for you. This is a knife that you didn't see me unbox because it came in a, a big box of knives that were, some were mine that were being returned to me, and some were loaners to check out from my buddy Jason. I'm going to link Jason down below. He is one of the creators and one of the admins mods of the Milli PM2 Para 3 group on Facebook. Or I should call it a club, rather. <laughs> it's a Facebook group, but it is genuinely a club at this point. And you may have noticed I've already reviewed several knives of his. If you look on his channel, you'll see that he's reviewed several knives of mine. So we have this thing going where we're just kind of sending knives back and forth that we think one another would be interested in checking out or that the other one should check out. And so this is one of the ones that he sent and it is a knife from a maker that I have zero experience with. So I inherently have zero experience with the model and it's really interesting. This is a Doyle Knives Jack Pine Savage. It's an M390 and it rides on bearings and it is, I don't know whether these are mid techs or full customs or what, it feels like a custom to me, but it's this really, really interesting little thumb disc operated folder and it's beautifully well done. So the first thing I noticed when I took this out of the box was the action on it because, oh my goodness, it is just one of the smoothest knives I've ever experienced. The lack of resistance on this skinny light blade <laughs> as it travels, it's, just, it's really, really smooth. It's an interesting design too. I like bowy shapes and this certainly has some bowy going on. Get that to focus, come on, there we go. You can see it's a kind of a dramatic bowie. I feel like usually on most bowies that I'm familiar with, this swoop here comes not nearly as far back as it does here. Usually that kind of clip where it starts that curve starts further up the blade toward the tip, and it gives it this really dramatic, almost kind of Persian tip, especially when coupled with this recurve here. It's a really unique blade shape. It's unique and it's not, right? It plays with shapes that already exist, I think it would be uh, almost impossible to create a blade, ship, blade shape out of nothingness now because so many blades for so much of history have been experimented with, but it's, it's a very fresh take, taking some elements from a couple of things I feel like and really just doing them well. You'll also notice the finishing on it is really, really well done. It's kind of this acid stone wash on the grinds and the swedge, and then a beautiful satin flat, which it's actually a little bit smudged for me. It's like pretty highly polished, almost looks hand rubbed. In fact, I'd assume it actually is a hand rubbed flat because the direction that it looks to have been sanded, it's just really gorgeous. And then even the spine is matched to the grinds in that like dark acid stone wash. So it seems really dark to me too for M390 acid stone washing. It, it looks really, really good though. I'm not usually, like for user knives especially, it's funny, it seems counterintuitive. I don't like acid stone wash on users because I feel like it actually, in my experience, maybe I've done it wrong or I've had ones that have been done wrong, but to me, it seems like it actually shows wear faster than satin does. So for me, on like user knives, I prefer satin, but I do like the look of a really well done acid stone wash like this. It has this cool dark finish and it gets like a little bit matte, although to the touch it's still very smooth. And it's just, it's really well done here. I, I don't know that this knife is going to be a user for Jason anyway, um, but regardless, it's gorgeous and I'm sure it would perform well. The blade grind actually gets really thin behind the edge too. It's a pretty average blade stock, I'd say, in terms of its thickness. It's not overly thick, not overly thin. I feel like it's a, a, a good choice for blade stock thickness here. But the way this grind is done, I don't, it's not like crazy thinnest knife behind the edge I've ever felt, but especially right here, kind of in the recurve, it's very thin and it came to me very, very sharp. I don't know the whole history on this knife, whether Jason has sharpened it or this is still the factory edge. I'm assuming this is the factory edge by the looks of it and it's really, really sharp. One thing I will critique, however, on the edge is down at the very end, there's 
it, the way the blade terminates or the edge terminates, it looks like it should, in theory, be able to get sharpened all the way to the back there. But I don't know if the camera will pick this up. There's just the littlest bit of a kind of heel right here where the, the edge actually stops like a couple millimeters before the end of where it's <laughs> ground like an edge. And so you get this like quite dull spot right here at the end. That doesn't necessarily like ruin it for me. I just think this knife would be better suited if you actually put a little sharpening choil right there instead. That way, I mean, the edge is already terminating and there's kind of a gap in that nook there anyways. I don't know, very, very small <laughs> detail, but it does have kind of a heel on the edge there. That said, the rest of the edge is, as I said, ridiculously sharp. So in terms of the rest of the construction on here, we've got black micarta handle scales, and the bolsters are obviously titanium, and then the hardware, if you can see that pivot screw, it's gorgeous hardware. I don't know whether Doyle Knives is doing that in-house or whether they're just selecting really, really nice hardware. The clip is milled titanium as well. The anodization matches very, very well to the rest of the knife. You can see it's a bolster lock, essentially a frame lock with a scale that rides over it. And it locks up very solid, very reliably in my experience thus far. It's a good amount of lockup as well. And if you look around the edges of this knife, let me show you here by the backspacer because that'll be the best illustrator of it. The finish on the edges all around the knife are, I guess you'd call them kind of like a crushed ice. It's a, uh, yeah, it's not like orange peeling. It's actual, I don't know whether this just took forever with like a little Dremel bit or what, but it's this really cool like crushed ice texture. And with this blue anodizing, it looks pretty striking. I'll be honest and say this isn't really like my aesthetic preference. Like if I was specking out one of these knives for myself, that's not a feature I would feel a desire to add because I'm just not crazy about like, I don't know, aesthetically it just doesn't jump out as being my preference. <laughs> but it's really well done. And looking at it, it certainly adds like to my perception of the quality of the knife, that finishing all around it definitely makes it seem more expensive to me. And I think part of it is oftentimes I don't find that my preferences lead me to what's most expensive. Like sometimes there are steps that are, are just an aesthetic choice and add a lot of cost. And maybe it's because I'm a poor boy at heart, but I've <laughs> kind of built up a tolerance to those kinds of things. And I find my preference is usually a little more vanilla. but. Anyway, the coloration that he's accomplished here is really, really good. And if I look closely at the tie on the bolsters, where it's kind of the flats, although they are a little bit contoured, it does look like it's been kind of orange peeled as well. I don't know if that'll come through, but it's got a little bit of an orange peel texture there too. And then the thumb disc <laughs> is even matched. I mean, it's just really, really well executed. So. I don't see any internal markings. The internals of this knife are very simple. There's no internal milling, although this tie isn't too thick. These liners, if you want to call them that. Bolster lock, I never know whether to call it the frame or the liners or what, because it's kind of both. But it's just, it's very well finished inside. The anodization runs through the whole the whole knife, so I can see internally that the same color is present on there. This backspacer is very well executed. It fits up superbly. There aren't really any gaps anywhere. I will say where the bolster meets the scale, it's not like a totally seamless transition. Like sometimes you run your finger over a transition and you can't even tell that the material is changing. This you can tell, but I wouldn't call it like a gap or anything. If there's a gap, it's so minor that it's not bothersome to me at all. And it's consistent. It's not like one side is a bigger gap than the other. It's just the way it fits up. You can feel the material slightly raise for the scale. Yeah, I don't know. This one's, it's, it's an interesting knife. So the reality is I'm not going to be carrying and using this knife. It's just, it's too pretty. Even if Jason 
had it as a user for himself personally. Uh, this is outside of my comfort zone for someone else's knife to be using and testing, but I will be fidgeting with it quite a bit because I already, <laughs> frankly, have been. It's just such a fun knife to play with because this action is bananas. It's really, really good. And it's nice because, I don't know, with the thumb disc, I find thumb discs don't bother me. I don't necessarily have a preference between thumb discs and thumb studs. I'm sure some people have much stronger opinions on the matter. But as thumb discs, as thumb disc knives usually go, that's a hard sentence to say right now for some reason, I'm not usually, they're just not my favorite. But on here, for the design of this knife and the way everything flows together, I actually really dig that they went with thumb discs because the placement to them is excellent for me to spidey flick. It's great for me to thumb flick. And the detent is tuned relatively soft. It's kind of on the lighter end without being so soft that I'm worried about this knife shaking out. It's not like that kind of soft, but for the deployment method, this detent is excellent. I'd be willing to bet if this knife was a flipper, that detent would be too soft for my liking. I'm almost certain it would be, because I've felt detents this soft on flippers, and they've usually frustrated me. But with the thumb disc, it just works really, really well, and it's, a, it's definitely the most fun knife to play with that I've ever experienced that has a thumb disc. Bar none. I mean, the only other thumb disc knives, to be fair, that I have or have had or have even played with, have usually either been Emerson's or Zero Tolerance made Emerson's or Kershaw made Emerson's. And the action on like my 0620 ZT is pretty good, but it's not like this, not even close. And the, I think I've only ever owned one or two real Emerson's, had an A100. That action was frankly, it was an old one, so maybe that's part of it, but that was garbage in my opinion. I didn't like that action at all. Sorry if you're an Emerson A100 fanboy, and maybe the new ones are better. But anyway, as thumb discs go, this is just absolutely phenomenal. It's really, really a good action. And this piece just feels special to me. I really like that everywhere I look at it, there's details some of which are subtle and small, some of which are like big design features, but all of the things that I, every spot on this knife that I look at, it's just really well done. And yeah, it all, it all comes together pretty well. So there's gonna be a full review after I play with this some more, fidget with it a whole bunch, and uh, maybe learn a little bit more about Doyle knives because I don't have experience with them. I feel like the knives of his that I've seen before have been much bigger than this one is. Um, that could be <laughs> totally off. I, I have very limited experience with him so far, so I'll try to look into him a little bit and uh, see what's going on over there, because this is a really, really intriguing piece, and I quite like it. It almost, yeah, I don't know, it reminds me a little bit, I don't want to say, I, I, another knife brand that I don't know much about, but I get kind of this vibe from, is Pina Knives. Just the, the pattern here, the shape of this handle with the bolsters and the Bowie blade shape, it, it feels kind of in that arena to me. And so it's cool because I, I didn't know that Doyle Knives did this kind of thing. So that's the cool thing about getting loners, right? As you get to experience new stuff. And anyway, that'll be my first impressions. I'm going to stop rambling and save any more thoughts for the review, but this is the Doyle Knives Jack Pine Savage in M390, and it is awesome. It's a really, really cool knife. So there you have it. There will be more to come on it soon.